So welcome, I'm Philippa Jeffries from River Publishers and today I have with me Pavlos Lazaridis from the University of Huddersfield in the UK and Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Mobile Multimedia and today we're talking a bit about the journal and his research experience in wireless communication beyond 5G. Uh, Pavlos, thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you like to start just by introducing yourself and your background a little? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm mostly working on uh, telecommunications mm -hmm. and uh, I have worked in uh, several of the generations of uh, mobile uh, communications from second, third, fourth mm -hmm. and now fifth generation and beyond. Uh, I'm working uh, on several uh, uh, projects and uh, I have the pleasure to be also the editor-in-chief mm -hmm. of uh, the Journal of Mobile Multimedia and I find this very interesting. Great, um, and I guess to start with, um, well, what are your thoughts on where we are with 5G now? Because we've seen the rollout over the last couple of years or so, but how kind of prolific is this uh, really yes. at the moment? We are at the implementation phase. Mm -hmm. It is going uh, quite fast. I think uh, despite the uh, pandemic and uh, all the mm -hmm. problems, implementation is going fast. There is a huge demand and sure. Uh, all, uh, almost all operators in Europe, the U US and Asia uh, have some uh, 5G networks in place. The, uh, the equipment, iPhones, new generation yeah. have uh, 5G capabilities, Samsung's new series also. So I think it's becoming part of everyday life by now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. I had noticed that most you know, mobile operators now are offering there's a lot of devices which have 5G capabilities. Um, and you mentioned uh, before that you're working now on beyond 5G research projects. Uh, could you talk a little bit about some of these and what uh, is next for wireless communications research? Yes, as you know, in general, every 10 years, there's a new generation <laughs> of mobile communications. So uh, the generations uh, uh, follow one another. Now from fourth generation, we pass to the fifth and the sixth generation, is going to be a, a, it's going to give a substantial improvement over the fifth yeah. uh, in terms of uh, uh, bit rates, faster internet, uh, much lower latency, and uh, uh, other qualities, better safety, security, privacy, and these qualities uh, can also give uh, uh, new applications, mm -hmm. like some applications that require extra low latency, like for example. You can do surgery far away, let's say, from Australia okay. to Europe, and you need really tiny uh, latency, very very quick response. Uh, also, huge bit rates that can give holographic yeah. communications. So, 3D communications, you can see a hologram of a person yeah. or of uh, some machine or some equipment that needs fixing, and then this is at uh, the moment uh, really impossible so yeah. new uh, higher performance new capabilities new applications okay and this will really impact i guess every aspect of life from like industry to production and communications like you say um yeah are there any other uh, particular projects that you're working on that you'd like to talk about uh, yes at the moment i'm working uh, uh, on uh, two EU funded projects. One is called Motor 5G. It is uh, funded by the EU Commission by a uh, good amount of 4 million euros. So this is a consortium of uh, academic institutions and industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all working on uh, similar topics and we cover most of the uh, topics of beyond 5G communication. So now it is called 6G. Yeah. Uh, uh, the interesting thing in this uh, project is, um, and it is unique in the world from this uh, respect, it is that um, it is training uh, ESRs, early stage researchers. So these are PhD okay. candidates that sure. are going to be trained during the project. They will have the opportunity to have training both uh, the academic institutions and also in industry. Uh, so we'll have 15 uh, mm early stage researchers working on all the aspects of the new generation of uh, mobile communications. And also many countries that are participating. There are uh, partners from uh, the UK, from 
uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Spain. There are big companies like big operators and there are also SMEs like from Spain and Denmark. This is one of the projects. There is another one that uh, uh, it is similar to the first one, but it adds uh, partners from the US, very okay. prestigious universities, and yeah. from Brazil. Okay, fantastic. And so, you know, most countries in the world now are getting involved with looking ahead to 6G. So like you were saying, it's kind of every 10 years or so the next generation is um, rolled out. So at the moment, you were saying 6G uh, to be launched in 2030. Um, I was wondering what your thoughts were on how we can progress to 6G in this time frame. Is it practical and kind of what are the key challenges to this? Yes, um, it is practical. The thing is, Key challenges are the co component cost, hardware mm -hmm. component cost. So as you, as you go to uh, new generations, you there is a tendency to go to higher frequencies. Yeah. Because higher frequencies can carry more information. So higher bit rates and faster internet. So the thing is, as you go to higher frequencies, the components become uh, more and more expensive. And uh, this is one of the factors that uh, slows down a little bit the progression. But as we all know, uh, initially all these um, uh, hardware components are very expensive, but when sure. they go to mass production, then mm -hmm. the cost goes down. So I don't think there will be a problem. Uh, there will be, there are many uh, research institutes working on, uh, on 6G at the moment and there is very substantial progress. So I think uh, we'll have an even better 6G uh, network in the future, yes. Okay, and do you think we'll continue to progress at the rate we are at the moment, so every 10 years or so? I think so, because now, okay, uh, this has been uh, uh, proven. I mean, the last uh, 40 years, we had uh, yeah. this exponential growth. So, Yes, I think uh, we'll continue to progress as long as there is demand. Yeah. Okay. If there is the demand, there will be also the technological innovations. Yeah, I guess there's always ways of improving something, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and kind of moving on, uh, looking more at the journal now. So one of the best papers for the Journal of Mobile Multimedia in 2020 was about privacy preserving of photo sharing on online social networks. And I think security and privacy is such a key topic, especially at the moment. What are your thoughts about the security and privacy challenges we face as we push beyond 5G? Yes, uh, this is one of the key topics. So each generation is more secure and more safe than the previous one. Okay. So 5G is using uh, 5G and beyond 5G uh, are using new concepts. Like uh, one concept is called network softwareization. So what this means is that the net, there are a lot of small virtual networks mm -hmm. and uh, instead of a big uh, solid network. And this uh, is called uh, also as well network slicing. So while you do this network slicing, you can uh, uh, combat attacks uh, much easier. And uh, these smaller slices of virtual networks can be uh, tailored to counter attacks. And of course, uh, uh, security is very important. Just uh, recently, yeah. uh, the 19th of May, uh, you know, big company paid a huge ransom for because of cyber attack. And uh, okay, there is a lot of work going on uh, on how how to counter these uh, cyber attacks in wireless, but uh, in all kinds of networks. Yes. And just to finish off i guess as we're running out of time but um would you like to just end with some thoughts about the journal what the topics are covering and what we can kind of look forward to uh in yeah. the next few months yes uh, the journal is covering very important and interesting topics i mean multimedia are now part of uh, all all of our lives mm -hmm. and uh, we're all going around with a smartphone and uh, communicating working uh, especially now during the pandemic, yeah. uh, see how important it is to have a smartphone with you yeah. and how, how indispensable it is. 
So the Journal of Mobile Multimedia is covering all these aspects related to smartphone use and from the, um, from the purely telecommunications uh, engineering aspect mm -hmm. to the more software aspect, even to safety, security, cyber attacks and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's covering a huge area and uh, maybe we'll have some special issues in the future on more specific topics. One topic that uh, we haven't covered yet and I think is important is uh, smartphone addiction. So yeah. <laughs> there are all these very important and positive developments, but there is also this uh, negative effect, mm -hmm. the only negative effect, smartphone addiction that's happening in young, young adults especially. We're all more or less addicted to smartphone use, but uh, in some cases it can be really problematic. Mm. So I guess it's just an important, I guess, when you're looking at these developments, especially uh, with wireless communications in the future. It's not just look at kind of the positives, but also the negatives, like saying with security and privacy, and also how it affects people psychologically with uh, mobile addiction. Uh, I guess, especially in the last year when everyone's been slightly more isolated than we were. Exactly, um, yes. It can, it can increase stress in some cases. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, there are huge benefits as well. Great. Um, I'm afraid we come to the end now, but thank you so much for joining me, Pavlos. Thanks again for inviting me. It was very interesting.